so that he could show us some of the books that Anthony Benizet used to create these very powerful abolitionist arguments in 18th century America. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our good friend Crystal Appia. We're just going to show you real quickly the fruits of her labor this morning, uh, getting all of Benizet's stuff out, and she's going to turn it over to Professor Jackson. Right, I think I'll probably leave that to you. Okay. Yeah, Professor Ready? Jackson. Um, because they have some of the sources that Benizet used when he was um, conducting research for his pamphlets that we'll be taking a look at during your talk, and I'll just pull them out as you uh, like. Well, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, and it's always a pleasure uh, to be in library coming to Philadelphia. This is, uh, except uh, I found today that you stayed next door, and I hadn't gotten over it. But I, I, I could have gotten this book finished. Because I traveled in my area, and that's not a, that's a pretty good ride every day. But and so we studied here, and uh, at the time I was doing this, uh, you're not tight, not tight, but, but, but I write by, you know, you have to generally you have to use pencils. So I wrote things uh, uh, by hand just sort of to get a feel. But this is what what library was just being established when Ben is a uh, read a lot of the books. Some he may have read before because. James Logan, a lot of people did have him in their houses, but when library companies established, uh, he is a, he and his brother founders, which means they brought, you know, I think for a dollar he could have been a founding member. So it was just a wonderful place uh, to work uh, uh, here. And uh, are you a uh, uh, Phil Lepzanski's successor? Yes, yes. And so he was a, a, a guy here named Phil Lepzanski who was there, and we, you know, would talk about jazz and civil rights uh, on lunch hours. So it just, uh, and there's a little book I see library companies put out about it, if you see it. And I had my thoughts in, in, uh, in the book about what it meant to come. Because as you, especially if you do an early 18th century or any early period, it's something great about smelling the book, being there. I know now you can go, even my students, especially, they, they, uh, everything is, is done online, 18th century man manuscripts. It's, it's fine. And uh, it's quick and it's good. But it's something special about being at a place, being able to, to go through uh, uh, the books and to... Uh, and to, uh, as I gave you an example before, when I was doing work on Benjamin Franklin, I told you he had written this uh, book, uh, some, uh, you know, an observation on, on increasing mankind, and there were 20 different copies. And I had to find out where he made his changes on his uh, ideas about that. So to go through each one, and you have to go through one by one, and, 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 and the key, at least at the Library of Congress, was a bit different. I went in one day, and I dressed like this, and the librarians were not very nice. And so I had to go to a film of an old Hungarian buddy of mine that had been in the Second World War, and I had a suit and tie. Then I went back that day with a suit and tie, and it was just much better. But a library company had to come like this and still be treated good, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's great. So uh, here's some of the books uh, that Benazade uh, would have used. Uh, so, uh, do so we have any separate? Uh, 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 like Bossman or Atkins? Yes, uh, Bossman. Um, hold on, let's see. Uh, Snellgrig. Okay, that's good. Yes. And then the um, collection of voyages and the new collection of voyages. Okay. So this would this is Bossman. Yes. So this is 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 is, is a one works in the views is by uh, uh, William uh, Bossman. He's a Dutch. And I just have an annotation of each one. It tells, now, uh, uh, this would have been uh, published uh, in 1704. Now, had, had, had trans uh had come from France to Holland to, to, uh, to England. So, uh, I think he read German. Whether or not he read Dutch, I don't know. What it is, but it would have been translated. And uh, this is also part of this. Now this is a, a we look at this a little bit, but, but this is, now these are, many of these books have been reprinted. So this whole collection here has been reprinted uh, in England. Uh, and this is called the Ashley Collection. Anyway, so this is made up a compilation of these. Now Bosman was a, uh, 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 as I say, he was Dutch, he spent in 1704, uh, uh, and this is the name of the printer there. And so one goes through the book, and he descriptions of the uh, coast of Guinea. Now, what I did, one year I, I, I had, I don't know, I think it was fatigue syndrome or something. So it was very hard to do anything, just to tie it up. So what I did was just, instead of thinking, I, I just typed. So what I did was went through Benazay's Southern Circle Accounts of Guinea and his other. 
his other works, and I typed up everything from his book on Africa. So I had to. Then I went back through this, and I went through the actual books to find the quote. And I found, now I understand that uh, uh, what happens is that often, sometimes he does, but in many cases he does not take the exact page. So to go through thousands and thousands of pages, so, so it, it can be uh, laborious. But Bosman was one that uh, uh, the first uh, used. So I went through and found uh, their quotes uh, from Bosman. Uh, here's one. Uh, Bosman is a factor of the Dutch at Delmina. Of course, Delmina in, in, in the West of Africa. Factor means just works for the uh, trading company. And the quote goes, that one of the former commanders hired an army of Negroes of Caesarea and Cavisteria for a large sum of money to fight the Negroes of Comane. So, Boston observes that one, that the whites went in with money, with, with, with drum, with gold, with that, and found a group of one tribe to pay them to fight against the, uh, uh, Boston observed that. Uh, which occasioned the battle, which was more bloody than the wars of Negroes usually are. Another commander gave at that time 500 pounds, another 800 pounds, two other Negro nations, to induce them to take up arms against the people. So you see, it was not natural always walk back between them. It came in and paid them. Now this is Bosman uh, uh, observed this. So I went through and found Now Bosman, uh, there were some who tried to find uh, whether there was any goodness amongst the Africans. Bosman was not one of those. But some things, uh, 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 he found that I think even astonished him. On page 13, we could just find the, uh, let's see. Well, this may be a, 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 so many different editions, but, but the quote goes like this. They are generally a good sort of people, honest in their dealings. Others he describes as being generally friendly to strangers of a mild conversation, courteous, affable, and easy to overcome with reason. In conversation, they discover a quickness of parts and understanding. And then Boston adds, some Negroes who have an agreeable education have manifested a brightness of understanding equal to any of us. So this is Boston saying this. So then they went through and found the quotes that he uh, 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 very much liked. Uh, Boston also was one who, 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 who looked at examples of, of tribal warfare, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, uh, of the food life, uh, of peoples, of, uh, of trade and other things like that. But mainly he was sent there as a, as a, as a member of some uh, a company who was exploring uh, uh, the coast of, of Africa. Uh, let's see if we have a, a, a who is this? It's just a snail Okay, snail grave. And each one, uh, let me see, so it would take me a minute to just look back here. And each one I, I, I uh, document, so snail grave. So here uh, uh, I quote Snellgrave. In his account of the slave trade, Captain Snellgrave observed that the blacks did not fear death, but they did fear dismemberment because blacks believed that if they were put to death and not dismembered, they would return again to their own country after they were thrown overboard. Now, you get this? Remember what I was telling you uh, earlier today about transmigration of the soul? So Benazay gets this from, from Snapchat. And let me see if I can tell you exact page and, and now I'll see if I can track it down. So that's putting up seven in on page six or seven. Oh, that's a map, yes. Uh, uh, look at the map there, page six or seven. So, okay. So, did, did, did we have volume two here of, 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 of the uh, of, of Atkins? Of, uh, Is that of, one of the questions of what yeah, yeah, yeah. Open front. See if it's Ashley. Okay. And it's volume two. And I'll see if, if it matches. In 
A snail grave was a little bit about snail grave. Snail grave. Um, Okay, Snell Grave, and this is a new account of some parts of beginning the slave trade. I published 1734, and it's excerpted in volume two. So what Astley did, uh, two people, Astley and Ashwan and John Churchill, they, uh, can we, I think, what is it, five, five or seven? Uh, five, five or eight. We can, then we can see if it can be traced. So this is what one has to do, one has to, and so the quote would be, the quote would be, uh, we found it again. Is it from February 1632? Huh? Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to give you the exact quote. Uh, so. Okay. So, uh, there is no date. Uh, the, 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 the quote, blacks did not fear death. So. Oh, this is Churchill. So, so, but I need the Ashley. So, so let me explain. Uh, uh, just, just so, 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 so there, there are two basic collections that they put them all together. And this is the, uh, the uh, collection of uh, Ashwan and John Churchill. Now, Ashwan, I, I guess he may have been, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if he's Indian or not. There's, there's no way I, I, I could find out. But it must be what the, the family must have gone in. And what Venice and what they did, they took all of these collections here and they put them together in these collections, in these two. And two people did it. One was uh, Churchill, and then Ashley did it in 1745. And they put them. Now, I don't know what the Venice read from the original here or from this, but it really wouldn't matter uh, uh, what he did. The only difference is, is that if he's reading from here, he'll give me a page number. But if he's reading from here, he generally didn't. And so, uh, here when he's uh, 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 on page 507, so you can see. So generally it meant that I'd have to read the, uh, you know, the, uh, 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 the whole thing. So the words of uh, Lacks did not. Oh, can I put, uh, but, but, but it doesn't matter. I can, I can take almost any quote uh, uh, from, uh, 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 from this. So, so here's an example. Uh, the Coromantines upon the Gold Coast are the most stubborn fellows. Now, who are the Coromantines, you know? Uh, they are the Coromantine uh, 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 tribe. Uh, Was that the one that, that they said were most, was most violent mm -hmm. and had right. the most uprising? Right. Now, we find that, let me give you another example. In, in 1741 in New York City, there was a, a slave revolt. Anybody ever heard of it? And uh, the best way to describe it would be that, uh, you remember a couple of years before the World Trade Center bombing, uh, uh, someone found a, uh, a slave grave over near, hmm? a grave site over near Christ Child, uh, the church, up by Trinity Church. Mm -hmm. It's up, uh, 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 up in, uh, you know, up where the World Trade, uh, it's not far from Sullivan High School, right up uh, better. And uh, right there they found, uh, uh, they were digging to build a new uh, office of the, uh, of the uh, I think, Small Business Administration or something. So they found these graves. And as they found them, the law is that you find the ship stop uh, digging. Well, they brought in, uh, got a very good friend of mine named Michael Blakey, who's a, a biological anthropologist. Now he's, he's at Howard, now he's a weird American. They went in and they started looking at the uh, race. Now, if you read the account of, uh, of some, by, by a man named Daniel Horseman, and he wrote an account 
of the slave uprising in 1741. And there was a big debate at the time. Is it a slave uprising? Is it just a, a thievery round? Or is it a, a witch hunt? And uh, they had this whole, for over a year, they had trials here. Uh, and now, people have, of course, the uh, Salem witch trials. And, um, and then, this is uh, uh, 1741, is two years after the Stono Rebellion. And some years after uh, a rebellions in, a, in, a, in, a, in Antigua. Well, so it comes out, they have this uh, slave revolt, uh, uh, and, and they, uh, well, they have this uh, conspiracy. Many people are killed in the end. Uh, it's the first time they've linked Dutch uh, man by man named John Houston with, uh, 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 with another slave they call Prince, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, they call a Newfoundland Peggy. Her name was uh, Peggy. And she had this, they called because she had this uh, big swath of, uh, of, 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 of red hair. Yeah, she was Dutch. And they saw that they would all go with this bar in Battery Park over near there, at this tavern, over to speak. And they were doing, and they were conspiring. Were they conspiring because during the process of these two or three weeks, a lot of people's, uh, rich people's uh, uh, jury was taken, the pewter drinkware and things like that, jury. And, uh, uh, so, and there were a lot of fires going on at the same time around Fort George, and Fort George, of course, made up a thatch uh, roof. Well, and, uh, and they were often used in that they were the Coromantines, and the Coromantines uh, 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 from the tribe uh, uh, Coromant, the uh, tribe of some of the uh, early tribes, near the Ashanti and others in, uh, in the west of Africa. Well, here he goes back. Oh, but so let me just finish this. So when they, when they dig up the bodies of the uh, of the uh, at the graveyard, uh, they try to tell where they're from. And the only way they can tell where they're from are they, several reasons. But uh, they have no DNA to match them. But they can look at two things. They can look at the body size. But they saw that some of the arms had been elongated. And they were elongated because they had been placed upon a wheel, or you took the wheels of a ship, you know, the wheel stern. You took the wheel, and you just did them that way. And you stressed the people until, until they uh, uh, died. And, but they could look at the and they could tell, you could tell, type of work a person uh, was involved in, but you could mess it up with certain tribal things. And mainly they could also look at the teeth, because some tribes would chisel the teeth in a certain way. And then they would see the jury. They could tell something the jury had come from, whether it be a, a Kuromanti. Kuromanti is the old word for Akan, for the Akans of West Africa. So uh, when they found out, they found out that now the question was, were they were in fact part of the uh, conspiracy of uh, of seventeen forty one? Many people are still now. So that's the linking of anthropology uh, and history. And in many ways, Ben is looking at modern anthropology. Well, there's no anthropology because he's looking at the flora and fauna of life. There's a beautiful book in this. The most beautiful I should have asked for the book I've read. It's by Sir Han Snow. You might know Sir Han Snow. Snow. It is a book. Maybe we can. Maybe Maybe we could put up a certain song. Okay. Could, and then it is the most, it, it, it is a description of the West Indies or something. But you look at it and the pictures are just, of all the bird life and the flora and the flora and they studied this. And, 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 and Sir Ron Sloan writes in the book uh, almost nothing about the West Indies. But he has one side that he says, when the slaves revolt, they put saltpeter in the womb. Wound, which means he would, you know, they say they you know, put salt Peter's shoes, you know, to, to conduct the uh, temperature of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, sexual desires of the slave, uh, so to speak. But they would put the uh, salt Peter, and so some, uh, so I understand, and then as they would read uh, things like this. So he had all these books that were uh, coming out about the light. But what these bio, what the biological or anthropological was able to do then was locate the time and frame. They could also tell about how long the person lived. So then the historians uh, uh, came back and looked at all this and were able to pretty much assume that these had been blacks who were active in this. The beauty of this, and, and it goes back to Benazay in a moment, is that when you read about the 1741 report and the cons, you come upon one name that had been involved in a 1737 revolt in Antigua. His name was Will. And Will, you see the name in the records of Antigua, and you see the names in 1741. Will had been a one who, uh, who, 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 he didn't confess, but he told on other people 
who participate in slave revolt. But who did he tell upon? Who did he tell on? Those who had already been put to death. So he didn't betray anyone. But anyway, he comes up here. And so they're able to find his will, and they're able to find out that uh, uh, the Hannah had come from Haiti and all these things here. Well, they were their con, and the con were more beggars. In New York City, after the 1741 vote, up until that time, 70% of all slaves had come from West Africa, and 30% had come from 70% uh, had come from uh, 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 what's that? 30% from the Caribbean. They come. They changed it because then they made sure that 70% came from the Caribbean, where they figured they could season the slaves before they came to New York. So all these things come up in early American history. So here uh, is this uh, 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 what uh, what's is saying: the Coromantees upon the Gold Coast are the most stubborn fellows. And he writes about them. Then he writes about a mutiny. Uh, there were 500 Negroes on board, 300 of them are men. But then he had 50 white men, all in health and very good officers. The mutiny began at midnight, when the moon shone very bright in this manner. The two centuries at the fore, two centuries at the, the century at the fore, uh, the front of the ship, uh, Hatchway, they were Hatchway, suffered four Negroes to go at once to the house of office, and neglected to lay the graves again, four more came up. Their eight having gotten up their irons fell altogether on the two centuries, who immediately called out for help. The Negroes tried to force the cutlasses from them, take the knives from them. But the vineyards or line from which uh, they were fastened to their wrists were so twisted in the scuffle that they could not get them off before afflictions came in. Upon this, the Negroes jumped overboard, but they found them all clinging to the cables of the ship. They were moored after. So you see, now, Benes they would read this and he would not put this in his. Why? Not because he felt that if he would write about uh, 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 the violence, number one, quick as made sense to it, but number two, he would do what? <laughs> it would be nice, but, but you said it right there. They would give the blacks a notion of what their strength could be. And, uh, and they would probably create a, a slave revolt. So for some reason, and, and, because he, and he found instances of this where he wrote about uh, a thing. So there was a big, uh, up in, in, in Del, Mimo, Del, Del Mino, which is Dutch Suriname, and he wrote about uh, that. And there was actually a slave, which is the only time he wrote about it. But he wrote in a letter to his friend, and, and in the letter he wrote about this, and he said basically, uh, 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 I, I would not write about this publicly because he would tell him about his strength. Another time he wrote about Barbados, and he says something like, uh, in one of his narratives, that they outnumber the whites 20 to 1. Because there's no, in Barbados, in Jamaica, the ratio is very high of slaves to And they always worried about that. And so uh, they would put that in, and so he would not put that in his, uh, in, his, uh, in, in, in his document. So this is the type of things that he would read. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to find that exact quote, but it's, it's here somewhere. Uh, so this is mainly uh, uh, about the mutiny. This mutiny was hatched by a few Coromantine Negroes who had been purchased two or three years before at the Wynwood or Wynwood Negroes. So here are some examples of a uh, of a uh, of, of, of that. Now let's look. Let's see what else do we have here. This is a. Uh, this is, this is, oh, that's a story, right? So, oh, and then maybe we can look, uh, is one of these, uh, let's see if this is Ask Um, That's the same. Oh, this is Ask oh, this is, oh, this is, oh, this is that's so, so, so you sort of get an idea of, of, of what's in each one of them, in it, they have these uh, beautiful maps, and I, uh, that, and what I did, I went to the Library of Congress, they had the map, uh, the map room. And these maps you can uh, see. Now these maps are from Snellbury, from the Snellbury book, in, in, in the book there. And you can look at how they do it. Now, now in some of the Circle Council of Guinea, he divides Africa up into different parts. Uh, the Gold Coast, the Grain Coast, and the Ivory Coast. Gold, it, it means pretty much that. I live in D.C., I live up 16th Street, I say I live on the Nickel Coast. But there's the Gold Coast, that's where the high class folks 
pretty well off uh, 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 black doctors, but uh, but uh, and my wife gets gets out of mad. We bought this house um, 15 years ago, and I was with three or four more times, finished work. But what happens in D.C. So it's, it's the go go. But what happens is in D.C. There's nowhere for white people to go. So now they come, you know, uh, uh, young, mainly young. So gentrification moving into where people live. And so now the Gold Coast, so in this area, but it's up 16th Street. Anybody know why it's so 16th Street? The White House on 16th Street. You go three miles straight up, and you go to the end up in, the, in, in, in Maryland. But this is where the, uh, the sort of like a, it had been a suburb. It may have been Italian uh, and, uh, and, 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 and Jewish population up until maybe the 1950s when the housing covenants were taken off. Where you, you know, uh, you could go to uh, our house. If there's a mezuzah on the door, where you can touch where it had been an early uh, uh, Jewish family. Uh, uh, they were housing covenants against uh, the Jewish population as, as well. I'm Okay, so let me just look at a couple more, and then we'll. Yeah. Okay, now, so if you look at all those, so you can go through the books and you can just read the different parts. And here's the maximum. Here's Boston, 1704. And Boston has pretty much the same thing. He has a. Uh, now, here. It's very interesting because here he has the uh, name of the places. Uh, there are many. He has uh, the name of the forts, the uh, name of the people who actually uh, went to the forts. So this would be the maps. Now these are not maps that people are using to travel. These are maps that that uh, people take back to the investors to show what's on the area. And then they have description. And in Benazay's account, as you remember, he has a section where he says, on the Gold Coast. This. Now I went back and read a man named Walter Rodney. Does anybody know him? Walter Rodney was the great, uh, uh, from Guyana, uh, the great Guyanese uh, 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 historian, from, you know, uh, a West Indian, uh, not, not Ghana, you know. And, uh, and uh, he had been assassinated, I think, in the early 81 because he uh, had been uh, against the colonization, uh, neo-colonization in his country. But he wrote something called the History of the Upper West, African West Coast. He became a very famous uh, historian. And I went back and looked at what he wrote now I went back and looked at some of the classical writers of African history, like J.D. Fage and, and Farge Fage and people like that. And Benazay's works messed up uh, perfectly with that, with the barriers. And so that was look. Now, let's just look at this. I, I just want you to, to, to thank you. I'm sorry. This is a. Here he would have, of course, some some beautiful maps, uh, and that's what people do. They, they go and travel all these. And again, now these aren't written for uh, to understand humans. These are written to understand what the country is like, so people can invest and see see some of these. So when he's studying all of these, uh, I saw this, this this book once in uh, in England. Uh, I was there, and it was uh, twenty grand. So uh, needs to say Jackson. Kept going, <laughs> but, uh, but, 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 and I, I just want to show you something. Is anyone, you know how, uh, has anybody ever seen uh, the Chinese uh, paint birds in silk? And there's a, uh, thank you. And we just look at a few of these. Let's see. For the art, and see, you see this is the, uh, the instrument. So, that, so you, and so this is some of the beautiful things, look. Everybody knows what that is. Everybody wants some of those. Right? Wow. Some crab, see? Some good old soft shells, not a hundred. Or a DC, 200,000 bushes. Man, but look. And so he goes there and he shows this. Uh, you see, in, in the study of early American history, uh, you have to find a way to enjoy it because it can be very depressing. I already read this a bunch of. I mean, it, it, it depends on, on, on what you. Uh, uh, because you can generally read the same thing, the same people saying. But here, they make it very interesting. And uh, here, and some of them have been put in, in, in the main color. So you see, and he makes all of this, uh, it looks like a conch shell, 
and all these things. And he goes all the way through what well, I had to read this whole thing in order to find out where Benazir had that. Uh, and this is in, in, in the book. I can could, I could look at my index and find it. But what he has, uh, one thing about the, uh, the using the saltpeter in the womb. So see, this is where Benazir, uh, he went. Now, and then finally, here are the original copies of his, uh, of his, uh, of some of his books. Now we can get them. You, you can get them now very easily. I know you are school teachers and don't have Don't do like me. I, uh, I, I order bookmarks. What's that book? I said, it's, it's, it's for pedagogical purposes, for work. So, I do the same thing with records, except with records. I buy a lot of jazz. I buy. But if the only time she would let me, and not fuss, if I bang in by women, she loves female singers. So Shirley Horn, Ella Fitzgerald, and there's this new uh, Haitian uh, singer, uh, Savannah. Get a first name. Oh, she's. So anyway, but these are just a couple thousands. And this is a, 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 a reprint. My wife was looking at it the other day. And it's by Ditto Press. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, who named the press Ditto? But, uh, <laughs> but this guy, this one. <laughs> anyway, so you can see. Yeah, so this is a, okay. Oh, that's the caution number one. So this is the caution number one in the Great Britain. And, and he writes this. And what's the type? A culture in one degree, and her colonies, to Great Britain and her colonies, of the calamitous state of the enslaved Negroes in the British dominions. See, so he's talking about all the British and all the West Indies and everything like that. And so he goes to and writes uh, uh, this pamphlet. And so if everybody wants to do research, you spend, I think, five hours and it's not, not so much. Uh, now, when I was doing it, I would go in, and uh, uh, they had uh, some copies. Now, what happened? Two things happened. In 1784, John Wesley, you all know John Wesley, founder of Methodism, uh, 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 he wrote something called uh, Some Observations on Slavery, or something like that. Mm -hmm. no, uh, 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 no, I'm sorry. Thoughts and Conditions of Slavery, some, I, I, I forget. This was John Wesley, 1784. Uh, and he wrote it. And, uh, he took exactly what Benazir said word for word. And, uh, Benazir, and he wrote Benazir and apologized, and Benazir said no. And you can take the book, and I took it, and put it right beside each other, and you can see the exact word. Now, what happens? The book is not published again until uh, the period of Reconstruction. Because Reconstruction people and, and, and people uh, uh, took the book and, uh, and, 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 and republished it. It's not published again, I found, until uh, a thought of slavery, I'm sorry. It's not published again until 1968. And it's published in, huh? Almost 100 years ago. And it's published in 1968. You know who publishes it? The New York Times. Has anybody ever seen these New York Times Arno books? These black and white books? Go to Coney Library, you'll see. Look, look upon it, and they have hope. And they published in 68. Why 68? But not just civil rights. What is that? King, Dr. King dies, but it's also the period of the Black Power Revolts. So they started publishing all of these things from earlier writers. And, and most of them are not calling for violence, most of them are calling for their literary works and things like that. They republished Phyllis Wheat, they republished uh, Carter G. Whitson. So I'm walking one day in Washington, and I pass this uh, bookstore, and it has 50 of these things on sale in the window. 50 of them. And uh, and it's three hundred dollars. How do I have about three hundred dollars back then? I'm doing all right. I'm doing better now. I tell you a joke about that, man. <laughs> so, so, and so uh, I call my best buddy up from Virginia. He loans me three hundred. I don't say anything. Anyway, but I got this whole set. But one of them was was his uh, thoughts upon our slavery. And so uh, uh, what they did was they published this. Benazay's and Wesley's book right there uh, together. It was a wonderful, uh, uh, a wonderful set. I, I find, as you are asking questions, I, I can find it. But John Wesley, of course, had a tremendous impact on modern anti-slavery thought. He is this Methodist leader in Britain. And therefore, he has to bring out of the two Benazay's words, word for uh, uh, word. And so he wrote these three or four pamphlets, and this is a, a, a short account which was his first. 1761, and then some historical accounts from the beginning. Uh, uh, short account is this one. 
and then some show the kind of uh, historical kind of beginning is the one that became his magisterial one, which is published 1771. And it is the one now that's going to be uh, we uh, uh, we we getting it uh, translated into French. The French is said in 1787 at the founding of something called the Society de la de, 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 de Loire, Society for the Friends of the Blacks. And they would publish this work, and they never did. So now the French are going to translate it uh, and publish. In 1787, uh, and, they, and, they, and, and, and as they found the society, they, they do it in, in, in the memory of the venerable, in, in the term in France, the word venerable is a very high term. I guess it would be like your potent is, and your, your, your majesty, I don't, I don't know. But it's a very honorable term. Uh, you know, if I call somebody, you know, your gentleman and scholar, you know, so and that would be a very, and, and then in 1787, something else happened. In London, they found the deceased, the London Committee for the Abolition of Slavery. And then in 1787, something else happened. All at the same time, uh, 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 they find the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the first uh, uh, organization of African Americans, uh, the Free African Society, and it's formed in 1787. I think y'all are probably talking about that. Founded by Richard Allen and Absalom Jones. All 1787. They found this meeting. Uh, Richard Evans' house is too small to go to a Quaker meeting house. And the first constitution they use is modeled after the Quaker anti-slavery constitution. So you see uh, the links, England and France, and all the seven ministers is there, they all are under, under uh, uh, his aura. And all of them are using these works. Now, lastly, some historical accounts of Guinea is the first work that, uh, uh, that I believe, one of the first works that I believe that was used in American history for the study of Africa and used by Reconstruction School. It's very hard to find. I'm still looking for more people. I've seen it written, but way down is just maybe it's, it's for someone else. But what books are used in Reconstruction to talk about Africa? They are no books. And so they use uh, uh, the legacy of some of Benazir's books. So you see where ideas came, and you see where ideas are going. Now, you can have uh, a question. We have time for just a few questions, then we're going to make sure that uh, Professor Jackson uh, can meet with some of you, and then we're going to break for lunch. So, questions about books, writing, Benizet's literary world. I'll ask one. When was uh, Wadstrom's account of Africa published? Was that in the 1790s? Which one? Uh, Carl Bernard Wadstrom. It's later. It's later? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. that was, it was after Benizet. Yeah, but, but I should tell you, though, but then, in, especially in England, they, 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 they have a lot of, uh, it's a new book by a guy named uh, Brick and Carey. In England, there are a lot of works that have, that have been written, Thomas Bay, uh, over, over a period of time. Some of them are very bastardly, uh, so to speak. But in France, also, uh, 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 there are literary works written about Africa. Some are not, not there. You understand, the French they had much more contact with that than the blacks had. The English had, had two. And in France, there was this, uh, this slogan, right? There are no slaves in France. That's because the uh, Cold War was passed in, in, in 1685. Yeah, the Cold War, they had certain, certain laws mainly about how to keep blacks in line. But there were also laws about how you should treat your blacks and treat your slaves. If you had that. In France, in England, as I told you about the Somerset case, uh, there was a notion that they were no slaves in England. They had 14,000, they called them body servants. Well, they called them body servants, but they were really uh, 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 slaves. Uh, by the time Edgar Brown said he's not a slave, but, but of course they are protesting the conditions of these 14,000. In France, there are slaves all over the islands. They may not be in France uh, proper, but they are serving. Uh, and of course, by the time of the Haitian Revolution, Haiti, uh, is the richest colony in the world, and, 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 and almost as rich as France, because of the what, what the sugar brings in, and it certainly is what keeps the French Empire going, because of that. And of course, many of you have read about the Asian Revolution. Yes, sir. Um, what led Benazet to read these uh, travel narratives? Is it, is it, is it, does he have a specific purpose, yes. or, or is, there, is it an obscurity, or other people no. reading the same thing? It's the only way he could find out about Africa. There was no other writ writings here. It was the only way, and he had heard about these germs about Africa. And they had the titles on them. Voyage to the Gold Coast of Africa. You, you see the, uh, 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 the title of it. Voyage to, the, uh, Voyage to Senegal, a true historical description of the Gold Coast. A voyage to, to Guinea, 
And scripture in the coast of no. So he heard about these books, and this is the only way he finds out. He didn't know what was there. And so he goes them. And then, but it's very common in those days for people to use excerpts out of different things. So these books have already been published, 1701, 04, 1741. So he was able to go through these and just get some excerpts and things like that. But they was to find out about after there's nothing else uh, 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 they could use. But so he had to, and again, it's as much bad as good. Uh, but again, to quote my grandmother, never lied his green and truth. He found those rings and truth and used that. So that's why some people, uh, 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 David Brown Davis, one of the great uh, historians, he wrote a bit as a, he was a collator of other people's ideas. Well, so I had many conversations with David. Uh, and I said, how many people do you know with, with original ideas? How many name on your hand? Come on, come on. You know, as the English one said, an idea is nothing until the text reaches the masters. Duke Ellington said what? He said, good artists borrow, great artists steal. This is Duke Ellington who wrote 2,000 tunes. Now what did he mean? He meant that the great Japanese listened to Rebel and Debussy. They meant because they were innovators. And this is the, they took their ideas. So he didn't mean you to steal. Because nobody could have really taken a train a sophisticated lady outside of do, But he listened to other people's melodies. And so this is what, uh, uh, and, and so back to, to David, and so I said, David, the problem is with you, 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 you just think that the movement is based on ideas. But if it's just based on people's ideas, nothing would have ever happened. People have just been thinking. But somebody had to take ideas and move. And so basically they compiled all these different, and so in that sense, he created an anti-slavery idea. You see, uh, Montesquieu had these things. Montesquieu wasn't that necessarily talking about black slaves. When 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 Bodin was writing in the uh, early period in, in, in the 16th century, he wasn't talking about necessarily. They were talking about the idea of slavery itself. Certain Aristotle, when he said when he talked about uh, a slavery uh, and the rights of slave and people of conquest, he wasn't talking about black slaves per se. So when Benazir was took the ideas of these and put them somewhere together and formed an anti-slavery uh, ideology. Some people call it rhetoric, but it was more than rhetoric. It was an idea because no one had said before that African Americans were humans. Remember, the Bible said what? When people did the Bible, uh, uh, that the role of the white to redeem themselves, to save their soul, was not to make the slaves human, but it was to make them Christian. And therefore, uh, 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 and that's what, in many ways, it was John Newton. It was the same thing. Amazing, great things, silent. And you know, Newton wrote this one thing, right? And he went on because he had been a slave dealer. So it's, it's, so I want you to see the complexity of it. It's, it's simple, but it's quite a, a complex. That's the beauty of looking. Complex. Of course, we get 12 rings on that one. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is a great space to end because that's a rousing reminder that early abolitionism has a couple of different roots. We've talked about uh, rebellions on board s uh, slave ships. We've seen Anthony Benze as this uh, really dedicated activist who's engaged in petitioning uh, and personal appeals, but we've learned something else today, and we're going to talk about it in the afternoon, the literary nature of even the earliest abolition movement, ben uh, movements. Benize is absolutely convinced um, that if you don't write and research abolitionism, you're not going to get anywhere in political or social society, and I think more than anyone else, Professor Jackson, you really made that clear, so we're all indebted to you, and thank you very much for your visit today. Thank you.